So imagine you're a hacker, okay, and you find this message that says steal this, but it's all mixed up in a way you can't read yet. How do you change it so nobody else can understand it? Or maybe figure out someone else's hidden words? That's what cryptography is, man. It's like a magic trick you use to keep things safe or break them open when you're online. Not just boring tech, but a fun kind of power where you decide who knows and who's left guessing. Let's open it up slow and simple so you can see how it works. Cryptography is all about hiding words so they're secret. Like when you start with something normal such as meet me at midnight, which anyone can read because it's plain text, and then you change it into something weird like what you can see on your screen, which looks like a mess and that's called ciphertext. When you change it, that's encryption, and when you fix it back to normal, that's decryption. All to make sure only your friends can understand it, while strangers are stuck trying to guess what it means. Long ago, spies used this trick by writing secret notes on paper during wars to pass messages nobody else could read, but now it's everywhere. In your phone, your Wi-Fi, every app you use, keeping things locked up or waiting for you to try breaking them. Let's start with symmetric cryptography, which is really easy because it uses just one key to lock and unlock, kind of like a box with a padlock, where you lock it with your key, maybe a number or a word you pick, and then you give it to your friend who uses that same key to open it up. The big one here is AES, which stands for Advanced Encryption Standard, and it's super strong because it uses a long, crazy key, like a password with tons of letters and numbers all mixed together that's really hard to guess. You see this in VPNs that hide what you're doing online so nobody can spy on you, or in encrypted drives that keep your files safe from anyone who finds them, or even in chat apps like WhatsApp, where your hey what's up gets hidden so only your friend can see it. It's fast because it's not too tricky, but there's a problem. You have to share that key with your friend somehow, and if you hand it over in person it's fine, but if you send it online and someone sneaky grabs it, they can read your meet me too, which is why hackers love trying to steal those keys, like when someone joins Wi-Fi and leaves the door open for a second. Next up is asymmetric cryptography, and this one's pretty cool because you get two keys instead of one, a public key and a private key where the public key is for everyone to use and it locks the box, but the private key is just yours and it's the only thing that can open it. It's like a mailbox where anyone can drop a letter in using the public key, but only you can take it out with your private key that you keep secret. This is called RSA, made by three smart people named Rivest, Shamir, and Adelman, and the keys are really big because they're made with huge numbers mixed together in a special way. You see it in HTTPS, so when you go to a website it gives you its public key and you lock your password 123 with it, and only their private key can open it up, like when you buy something online and your card number stays safe from everyone else. There's no sharing one key like symmetric, which makes it different and it's slower because it's harder to do, but it's great at keeping things hidden, which is why hackers like it. If they can get the private key from a computer, they can see everything, or if they trick you with a fake public key, they can sneak in the middle and take it all. Let's play with something easy you can try yourself, called the Caesar cipher, which comes from old Roman times and is simple to do. Take the word hack and move every letter three spots forward in the alphabet, so A H goes to K, A goes to D, C goes to F, and K goes to N, which turns hack into something like this and that's encryption. Then you move it back. K goes to H, D to A, F to C, N to K, and it's hack again, which is decryption, but it's not strong because there's only 26 spots to try and you could guess it pretty quick, though it shows you how hiding words can work. Try it with steal. S goes to V, T to W, E to H, A to D, L to O, so you get something like this and then move it back to steal or try code. C to F, O to R, D to G, E to H, which makes it something like this and back to code, or even dog. D to G, O to R, G to J, turning into this and then back to dog. Today's cryptography is like this but way stronger, with AES and RSA using keys that are too hard to guess, and Caesar's just a fun little start you can do with a pencil and paper to see how it feels. There's other stuff you'll see too, like Base64, which isn't cryptography, but a helper that turns hack, or even a picture into something like this because some things, like emails or websites, Sites, don't like messy stuff and need it simple, with letters and numbers everyone can use like A to Z, 0 to 9, and a couple signs. It doesn't have a key or a secret, so anyone can change it back to hack without trying hard, and you might see it on a web page holding something like a name or a file, where hackers look at it, open it up, and sometimes find a password someone thought was hidden, which is funny because it's not a lock, just a way to carry things around. Morse code is another one that's not cryptography either. It's dots and dashes from old radios, where hack turns into list of dots and dashes with H as four dots, a as dot dash, C as dash dot dash, and K as dash dot dash, used by people on ships or planes to send messages like help me with beeps across the water. It's not a secret because if you have the list you can read it, but it's cool if nobody notices, and you might hear it in a movie with beeping, or find it in a game as a little surprise that makes you smile. Hex is there too, and it's not cryptography, just a way to look at things, turning bytes into pairs like zero zero to FF, so hack in bytes is something like this, 
and hex makes it look like this, where each pair shows what a letter is inside a computer. You see it when you check data or files, and it's open with no hiding, like if you look at a picture file, hex shows you the pieces inside, which hackers use to peek at what's going on under the hood. Rot13 is a small one that's not real cryptography either. It moves letters 13 spots, so hack turns to this with H to U, A to N, C to P, K to X, and if you move it 13 again, it goes back to hack, used on old websites to hide things like the end is near, so you had to figure it out. It's weak because you'd get it fast, and like Caesar, it's just something to play with and have fun. Hackers care about this because cryptography is in all the fun places you can mess with, like passwords that get hashed. Not like encryption, but one way, where Shea256 turns hack into this, and you can't fix it back, though you can guess until it matches what you find. Wi-Fi uses WPA2 with symmetric, so you catch someone logging in, like at a coffee shop when they join the network, and guess the key to get in, or chats like Signal use symmetric to go fast and asymmetric to start it, keeping strangers out of your messages. HTTPS has asymmetric to begin and symmetric to keep going, so every website with a lock uses it, and phishing means you grab stuff before it's locked, or find base 64 showing something silly like a code someone left there by mistake. You can spot it easy. Open your browser and see the lock by the web address, that's cryptography working, or text a friend on an app, and it's hiding your words so nobody else sees, giving you lots of spots to try breaking in and have some fun. Cryptography isn't perfect, though, because keys are everything. If you use a weak one like password123 for AES, you're in trouble and anyone can get it. But good keys are long and random, hard to guess, like a bunch of letters and numbers all mixed up together. Asymmetric stops working if the private key gets out, and people leave them online sometimes like a big oops, letting anyone take them, and humans mess it up by getting tricked for their password or sharing a key when they shouldn't, which is your way in because people slip up more than the tech ever does. So wrapping it up, cryptography is your lock and your way in. Where symmetric is fast with one key but you've got to share it carefully, and asymmetric is cool with public and private keys, slow but safe for hiding things well. Base 64, Morse, Hex and Rot13 aren't cryptography. They're just helpers that move stuff or show it, not hide it like the real stuff does. And hackers win by finding weak keys, leaks or silly mistakes people make all the time. It's in your Wi-Fi, your browser, your chats waiting for you to try it out. And you can start small by changing hack to this or turning something like this to hack to see how it feels and get into the game. That's it. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and if you liked this, hit subscribe or something to stick around. Go mix up some words, break something, have a good time, and I'll catch you later, man.